So guys, I've been using the 13-inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar for a really long time now, and it's time to share a long-term experience about this device. And to start off, it's been surprisingly good. So I feel 13 inches is just the right size for a device which you'd be carrying to work or to college, and it is fairly light at 1.4 kilograms, but it's definitely not as light as the MacBook Air. So a small disclaimer before we start talking about the performance of this machine. So my laptop is the mid 2017 13 inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, and it'll be celebrating its third birthday really soon. And what that means is that it's running on a slower, outdated processor than the ones on the models sold right now. So this guy over here has a 3.1 gigahertz 7 Gen KB Lake dual core Intel i5 CPU. While well, today's MacBook Pros get a host of upgrades, including a quad-core processor with higher clock speeds, I'll leave a link of Intel's site which compares the performances of all three of these CPUs. And yes, numbers are just one side of the tape, but there's no arguing that the 2020 MacBook Pros with quad-core processors are miles ahead in both single and multi-core Geekbench performances. So I have been using this device as my only college, come media, come editing device, and here's what it's like. So I've been editing 4K videos on this 13-inch MacBook Pro using Final Cut Pro, and the performance has been really acceptable for a computer that does not have a dedicated GPU. So Final Cut Pro does have the occasional hiccup, but there are no visible frame drops when you're working with 4K footage on the timeline. Rendering is not the fastest, and it does take its sweet time. But it doesn't hamper the drafting of your project to a great extent. So minor color corrections can be easily made to the footage without a huge drop in performance. But adding LUTs sometimes does slow down the process quite a bit. So one thing worth mentioning is that the performance drops dramatically if you're doing something simultaneously in the background, or if you're trying to screen record your video timeline during editing, for instance. But I think this might be more pronounced on my machine. Since I have a dual-core i5 chip, the laptop is still reasonably quiet throughout the entire edit, and the fans only kick in when you're doing something really intensive, like using multiple 4K overlays in the timeline. So I've edited 4K videos shot at 24 and 30 frames per second in Final Cut Pro, and everything goes well until you try editing a 4K video shot at 60 frames per second in a 4K 60 frames per second timeline. And that is when things start going really wrong, and I did eventually manage to finish that project and export it, but my poor dual-core laptop kept dropping frames every other minute, and it panted and cried throughout the project. But otherwise, the last seven, eight YouTube videos that I've exported using Final Cut Pro have all been exported under seven to eight minutes, so I feel Final Cut Pro should work just fine for most video editors. And I still believe this is a perk of Final Cut Pro's optimization as a software. And that being said, the 2020 quad-core MacBook Pros would definitely fare a lot better at video editing. So this laptop has also been pretty good at editing photos in Pixelmator Pro, and it's also a good device for coding in multiple environments. But training complex data models is painful because it does not have that GPU. So lately, I have been experimenting with Apple Motion, which is similar to Adobe's After Effects, and this laptop without that GPU does very bad in Apple Motion. So just for the kicks, I tried playing a few games like CS:GO, Age of Empires, and Tomb Raider on this device. And while some of them worked fine, the rest of them worked, but at really low frame rates. And it wasn't such a good idea, and we'll talk about that in another video. So overall, the 13-inch MacBook Pro all these years has been dissed by critics for that lack of a GPU, but there's a good chance this device might just be fine for the things you wish to do on it. So thanks to the internal SSD, app launches and file transfers are blazing fast, but I feel 256 GB storage is just too limiting. It greatly limits the number of apps, media, and games you'd want to store on this device. And the fear of constantly being out of space is a wet blanket for creative geniuses, and it can quickly escalate into a nightmare. So I have been using a couple of SSDs and external hard drives to tackle this space issue, but they end up sapping the battery a way lot faster. 
So it's general knowledge that Apple's butterfly keyboard was a plague which has affected a lot of users in the past 3 years and now it has finally been eradicated. So my keys have so far been fine and I can still achieve my average typing speed of 80 words per minute even on this dreaded butterfly keyboard. So the one thing that absolutely sucked about this keyboard is not having a physical escape key. And this forced me to compulsorily shut down my machine when an application went rogue while in the past I could have just hit command option in escape and force quit that application. So yes, the touch bar is now standard across the MacBook Pro lineup right from the base model. So while I did initially find it more gimmicky than functional, I really like how it chips in and offers the shortcuts that I wish to use in some applications like Final Cut Pro or when I'm editing a text document. So since Apple ditched every known port we had on the previous generation of MacBook Pros, the dongle era began in my life. So I've been using a Satechi Type-C card reader which supports both micro SD and SD cards and it is really stylish and well built but the only downside to this product is that it heats up quite a lot because of that aluminium enclosure. The next adapter I have is an Aki multi-port dongle which has an Ethernet, HDMI, VGA and USB-A ports. I also have a few USB-C to USB-A adapters and I'll link all of these accessories in the description below. So if you're a hardcore user or plan on making content on this device, then I would strongly insist that you go for the 4-port variant as this laptop always will need to be plugged in while doing something intensive. And with that, I would like to come to the battery life. And one of the reasons I picked up a MacBook was for that praised and claimed 10-hour battery life. And I hate to admit that even when I'm just reading a PDF document, I still cannot make it past 6 hours on a single charge with the Wi-Fi being on. And this number just nose dives when you do something intensive like editing a video or have multiple tabs open in the background like I always do. But lately I've been getting this sad vibe that the Macs we get today are not as good as the ones that were built a few years ago. Because of the number of technical complaints like failing GPUs, bad display cables and horrible keyboards which cause a lot of distress and the very fact that these are expensive computers to buy and even more expensive to repair if something goes south and all of these issues are making it increasingly harder for me to recommend the MacBook to people who really need a reliable and comfortable computer for work. So despite all of that, I really like the 13-inch MacBook Pro and it is really a very versatile device. It has a very beautiful, crisp, color accurate display and crispy speakers making it a delightful device to create and consume content on. And it also has a very acceptable performance even though it does not have that dedicated GPU. And the 2020 variant has improved in so many ways by offering snappier and better internals and a hopefully more reliable keyboard. And honestly, all of those upgrades make an obsolete device which was so capable a lot better and more relevant to use. But if you want a performance-oriented small Apple laptop which will handle all of the tasks you want to throw at it, although at a slower speed, then yes, the 13-inch MacBook Pro is the device that you should go for over the MacBook Air. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. I hope you found this video useful.